Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Free Market Medical Association member webinar. This is sponsored and hosted by the FIA Group. My name is Adam Russo. I am the CEO and co-founder of the FIA Group, and I am extremely honored and excited to be presenting and introducing the amazing, amazing presenters we have today on this webinar. The presenters are myself, that great looking guy right there on the left, and with me is going to be Dr. Keith Smith, the co-founder of FMMA, as well as Jay Kempton, another great friend of mine, a co-founder at FMMA, and Mr. James Dunavant, the executive director of FMMA. Now, before I get into it, you know, you're supposed to do bios, but I'm going to, you know, I think if everyone, anyone on this call doesn't know who these amazing people are, then you probably should be on the call, right? But I just want to give you a little background. Dr. Smith is also the medical director at the Surgery Center of Oklahoma. He is someone that I've looked up to for many years. I'll never forget the story of when I first got to meet him. I was so excited. I was at a SIA conference and he was going to be presenting. And I just wanted his autograph. To be honest, I wanted to shake his hand, have a picture with this guy, and tell him like how much I admire him. Well, I walk up to Dr. Smith, or Keith, and I say, you know, I'm Adam Russo. I'm so excited. He goes, I've been excited to meet you. I'm like, what? The fact that he even knew who I was was, was a pretty amazing. Jay Kempton isn't just the co-founder of FMA. He is also the owner of the Kempton Group. And I can tell you as a, a person, as a CEO who works with hundreds of TPAs across the country, there isn't one TPA out there that is more loyal to their customer base. He truly cares about price transparency, truly cares about trying to do everything possible to ensure high quality, low, low cost care for his employer groups, his clients, and their members, which are their employees, and their family members. He truly considers the dependents family, not just another person to add to the role. In addition to that, Jay believed in my company, the fee group, not when we were, not, not like now, where we have a couple hundred employees and we're well-regarded in the industry. Jay took a chance on this, you know, loud mouth, strange kid from Boston, this high energy guy from Boston, back when we had maybe five employees. So we've grown to become great friends. We mutually love each other. Great, he's just a great person and I'm excited to be presenting him today. The last guy I'm introducing, Mr. Dunovich, I don't know this guy at all. I'm kidding. He's another great individual. The fact that they, that Keith and Jay thought he was the right hire, the right person to direct this, organiz this great organization, well, that proves enough to me that he must be and is a great guy. So this is my company, the FIA Group. What we do at FIA is empower plans. I can tell you a couple of things, how and why we support this amazing organization. First of all, we co-founded with Dr. Jeff Gold the Massachusetts chapter of FMMA. And I can tell you the reason, that's how, right? How we support. We make sure we present whenever possible. We push FMMA and their beliefs and their entire processes. Everything about them is just exactly, embodies exactly what my company, the Fee Group is about, which, which is to ensure that every hardworking American and their families can afford and have access to high quality, low cost, Healthcare, that is the number one thing. Why we do it is exactly what I just said. It's very simple, it's very easy to have an organization where you simply just count the number of bodies, you try to grow it through membership fees, and your, your whole entire view of being a successful is profits and losses. What I love about FMMA and what I love about Jay and Keith is sure, you have to make money, sure. You have to have a profitable business, you wanna have a successful business but they don't define success solely on profits and losses. They define success on quality outcomes, on having members that are healthy, members and their families that are taken care of, and FMMA through their transparency belief and the fact that what they're doing is not easy to do in a system that is full of corruption, deceitfulness, and the system is built to try to hide everything from the actual patient i.e. the consumer. And that is how and why we support this great organization. Go to the next slide. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. James Denovant to take it over from here. As again, he's the executive director of FMMA. 
and he will talk about the state of the free market medical movement with Dr. Keith Smith and Jay Kempton. Guys, take it away. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam, and thanks to the FIA group for being a very excellent partner and uh, supporter of the Free Market Medical Association. I just wanted to uh, start out by introducing this to say one of the reasons why we decided to do this is because um, I have the privilege and opportunity to go and to some of our chapter meetings and see all the excitement between our that our members have. And of course, when our members go to the national conference, everyone is excited and they get an opportunity to meet and uh, network with other free market uh, people like themselves. And so everyone doesn't necessarily have the same opportunities that, that, that we have if you're uh, out in a state where you might not feel like, you may feel like you're one of the lone rangers out there. And so we thought this would be a good opportunity for you to have an opportunity to hear from uh, the founders, uh, Dr. Smith and Jay Kempton, just like you would do at the founders panel at the national conference. And uh, we wanna do these periodically uh, to support our membership. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Smith and Jay to sort of give some uh, highlights, success stories, some maybe some challenges that they faced and uh, take it away guys. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and start. Well, hello, I'm Go. Keith Smith. Um, co-founder of Pre-Market Medical Association, Adam, and everyone at FIA, thank you for uh, hosting this webinar and giving us a chance to kind of discuss the state of the movement. Uh, it's, it's very exciting. I think uh, every time someone says, well, yeah, if this free market movement is so, so wonderful, why isn't it bigger? And my response increasingly is, given all the odds against this movement ever even getting off the ground, uh, the size of it and its rate of growth is is truly astonishing. Uh, there's a there's a movement in the country uh, that I think has started. I say say the horse is out of the barn. Uh, once once people become aware, uh, buyers of all kinds, whether it's self funded plans or individuals, once they become aware that cheaper and better, uh, that affordability and great access uh, can go hand in hand. It's, uh, it, it's very difficult to put that genie back in the bottle. Uh, and it, it's out. Um, and, and thanks to the dedicated members and the passion of this movement and, and members like the FIA group for promoting this, I, I think that it's now a force to be reckoned with and, and truly is not going to be stopped. One of the most powerful <clears throat> effects of the market um, is to bring otherwise bad actors uh, into, into the fold. And we're seeing that here in Oklahoma City, and I think we're seeing it in other parts uh, of the country where people who traditionally would be uh, thought of as very anti-free market, uh, black hats, as Jay calls them, they, they first started kind of putting their toe in the water uh, to see if they could, if they could stand it. Um, and we actually have facilities that are just on the diving board about to jump in now. Uh, there, there is a full service hospital uh, here in Oklahoma City uh, with which uh, I've been able to deal uh, on behalf of self-funded clients uh, to buy any and everything that they sell uh, in, in an inpatient basis. And they are they're one of four inpatient hospitals now that kind of has their toe in the water. Uh, but when I call them and I say we have, you know, a fellow from Boston or Fort Lauderdale that needs a radical prostatectomy, I've, I've got a place to send them uh, with an associated price, uh, a price that can be accessed uh, by the buyer, by the self-funded plan, as if they were buying it from Surgery Center of Oklahoma uh, through through our clearinghouse we call Atlas uh, Medical Billing. So to watch hospitals that have not been on board, uh, traditionally black hats, get into this space, I think is an indication of how powerful uh, the market is, how powerful these ideas are, uh, and I'm very optimistic that that there will be two other full-service hospitals uh, in the Oklahoma City area that will that will join this movement. Uh, and these are these are people that 
uh, the people that run these institutions are not people that uh, I would characterize in, in prior years as friends of the free market, certainly not friends of Surgery Center of Oklahoma or Keith Smith, uh, but that they are, that they're coming along is evidence that, that the market's putting a lot of pressure on people to pay, pay attention to these ideas. Yeah, I think that, I think that's really the, the thing that we want everybody to understand across the country is everybody says, well, you know, things are, things are easy because you're in Oklahoma and, you know, you have Surgery Center of Oklahoma, you know, this has gone, this movement has gone way beyond Surgery Center of Oklahoma or the Kempton Group. Um, you, know, you have competitors right here in, in Oklahoma, in our region. I have competitors that are doing what we're doing. <clears throat> but these, uh, you know, otherwise black hat hospitals, you know, we've got the good guys, you know, the Surgery Center of Oklahoma and, and the other free market providers. But when we're starting to see these hospitals starting to react to the market, it's important for the audience and, and the, the, the folks that are out there is that that, as you mentioned, is the power of the market. It's not, it's not market leverage. It's not guarantees of volume. There's no hidden contractual lever that's being pulled there. It's simply that the buyers of healthcare goods and services have other free market options available to them. And the hospitals are simply having to react to what's happening. So when they agree or start to even enter the market and start to be more proactive with offering transparent, no legislation caused that to happen. No state interference whatsoever. It was simply, if they don't do that, they know that they're going to continue to start to lose patients. And as they lose patients to free market facilities, these free market facilities become stronger and stronger in the market. And what you know, what's really happening there is we're starting to see the market, at least in our region of the country, the market in healthcare is starting to Start, those gears are starting to, to, to move again <laughs> to where they're not so frozen um, and, and we're starting to see active competition. It's really what it is. Um, and I think we need to acknowledge that, I think is, is my point. And, and there's still a lot of work to do, but we are also vindicated. Like, I mean, when we see this, when we see what, what Murray Rothbard called the power and the beauty of the market, I mean, we are seeing it. And, and, and Jay is right. I mean, the, the gears are starting to turn. There's active competition going on. And while there's still a lot of work to do uh, for the market and for everyone in this <clears throat> movement, I think we have to acknowledge that we really are vindicated uh, in turning this monster loose on all the black hats. Yeah. And you know, right before this phone call, <clears throat> I, took a, I took a phone call from, it was actually an email invite from somebody that had heard about the free market medical association who was actually a, a, a physician <clears throat> that's a general uh he was he's the uh, uh the managing partner of physician-owned hospital in in michigan just north of detroit and had that call with him about an hour ago in north of detroit michigan you have a hospital they have 74 beds six ors and so this is, is this starting to sound familiar? They they went their facility went bankrupt a few years ago. A bunch of physicians came in there and said, if we're going to try to do this again, we're going to do it where we're attractive to the self-funded employers in our area. And so they had never heard of the Free Market Medical Association. They did hear about other facilities that were doing, you know, what what we're talking about doing, and they decided just it would be part of their of their business plan. And so as I was talking to him, the guy had had almost a hundred bundles already put together and he was calling us because he heard that we were a third party administrator and he wanted to know, do we have any clients in, our, in his area? Of course, I told him, no, I'm you know, working in Oklahoma and Texas, but you ought to join the Free Market Medical Association so you can get on the radar so other buyers may be able to find you. But we're seeing that story repeating all over the place. You either had demand looking for supply or you have supply looking for demand. I think what made Oklahoma special is you had supply and demand three miles apart from each other. Right? Right. Uh, so if there's any mystery advantage to, to what we have experienced that kind of kicked this movement off, whether it was luck or, or, or fate, um, but, but that, that buyer and seller once they do find each other, this is replicatable all over the country. 
you want to talk a little bit about some of the cool stuff that's happening? You know, you want to talk about uh, yeah. Oklahoma ER and your experience with them, but they're a kind of a new entrant. Yeah, <clears throat> to follow up before we do that, I think it's important for everyone to know that well over half of the patients we we operate on at our surgery center here in Oklahoma do not live in Oklahoma. And I've signed, I don't know how many agreements with uh, TPAs and employers in the last four months, and not one of them is here in Oklahoma. So I think that as more and more self-funded plans embrace this movement and a travel option, and the more patients that fly to Oklahoma City or to Torrance or to Charlottesville, Virginia or Austin, wherever they go, this market pressure is going to be, it's going to have kind of a logarithmic effect and we'll see more and more facilities, like Jay said, all over the country uh, coming on board. Um, Jay mentioned the Oklahoma ER and hospital. Uh, this is uh, one of the most courageous entrepreneurial groups I have ever encountered. It's a uh, basically a group of great, very wise, very clinically uh, smart and experienced emergency room doctors who who were brutalized by big hospital systems uh, and knew that they could have a better life and the patients they took care of the emergency room could have a better experience if they just did with the emergency room what we did basically with our surgery center and that it's physician owned and controlled. Their goal is when a patient gets to their facility for the emergency room doctor to actually greet them in the waiting room before they've ever finished their paperwork. And that is what they do. So this is an emergency room hospital. So they do all kinds of uh, imaging lab and they can actually admit patients that need, need to be admitted but don't need surgery. We've actually worked beautifully with them because they will call me on my cell phone. And so we have someone here with appendicitis. And again, these are very clinically experienced emergency room docs. And when they say someone has appendicitis, they have appendicitis. And so the general surgeon talks to them. And next thing we know, they're at our surgery center. And this patient has been uh, derailed uh, from one of the price gouging so-called not-for-profit hospitals to which they would have otherwise gone. So they they uh, are also housing patients that we would we operate on at our facility that need another two or three days uh, to sleep it off after their surgery. So it's actually expanded uh, the type and uh, difficulty and complexity of the surgeries that we're able to do at our surgery center. It's very disruptive. Uh, patients that that are going to this to this emergency room are not going they're not going to the big box hospital. And so they don't get referred then by the hospital employee doctor uh, to the butcher uh, that, that they're forced to refer to because he's also a hospital employee, not because he's any good. So it, it, it's a very, very exciting uh, facility. They're open in Tulsa now. I believe they have another facility scheduled to open on the south side of Oklahoma City. And I think they have multiple facilities in Texas. Texas. So uh, this this is an outfit to watch. Yeah. So that's from the from the seller side, uh, from the buyer side of the table as a TPA. They also offer an incredibly attractive bundled cash pricing for everything that they do at the emergency uh, department. And so <clears throat> it's pretty easy for us to look and and see you know what would that have cost if it was at the the hospital you know a couple of miles down the road. And so, like everything else um, that, that we do with, with the free market providers, it's no cost to the patient if they choose Oklahoma ER versus somewhere else. Actually, a competitor of, of ours, of the Kempton Group, um, the Tracy Krieger over at Evolution, which is a good FMMA member as well, um, they have a client that is in construction, and they uh, have partnered with Oklahoma ER and has saved that fairly large uh self-funded employer a ton of money already just in a few months because when those guys get hurt on the job they're going to Oklahoma ER instead of the other EDs and uh, getting paid at 100% and saving a ton of money. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Another area that where we've seen again in, in our area but um, there's a, a, a proton center 
a comprehensive proton therapy center that has entered. They've been, they're not new to Oklahoma, um, but they are new to the free market uh, arena. And they're hoping to attract uh, patients uh, from all over. Not only do they have uh, very uh, advanced uh, therapies, great outcomes, but they also want to be one of the, the lowest cost solutions for the types of, of, of care that they provide. And so um, they have, they're they a free market medical association member as well. It's Oklahoma Proton uh, Center. And um, they'd love to talk to anybody out there that might be able to uh, partner with them and, and see value in them. So those are those are just a couple of, of ones that you would, I mean, a year ago, we wouldn't have thought that either one of those would necessarily be rushing into the free market movement. But uh, they approached you, didn't they? They did. They did. Yeah. And uh, interestingly enough, um, <clears throat> they changed ownership, changed philosophies with that. They used to be one of the black cats out there oh in the gosh. previous ownership. Absolutely. <clears throat> And um, they actually share space with a black hat, so it's <laughs> yeah. pretty interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's cool stuff. Um, I think the other one that that uh, actually came in is also a new member of the FMMA is, is a Karen. Um, you want to talk a little bit about Karen and, and yeah. her association with uh, Dr. McCary? Yeah. So a Karen Health, it's A C C A R E N T, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. They they have as a partner. Uh, Johns Hopkins, and so they are bringing uh, bundles uh, to the patients and buyers in the United States and to the FMA. Are they a member? Yes, they are. They're yeah. a member. So they're bringing bundles for unusually large, very expensive uh, procedures, you know, bone marrow transplants, that sort of thing. Complex um, cancers, complex mm -hmm. cancers, pediatric cancers, and they have <clears throat> they have about eighty bundles. Mm -hmm. they, they have about eighty bundles for these huge, uh, otherwise planned bankrupting sort of experiences, um, and so they reached out to one of us. I don't remember. I we, think you originally, and then and yeah. we both met with them, and um, <clears throat> they they are rightly. Uh, proud of the number of bundles for these complex uh, cases that they uh, that they offer. Um, Marty McCary, who is a very active member and, and also just Offered. on every TV station. I mean, you turn it on, and Marty's there. The face. Yeah, he's he's out there, and of course he's the he's a busy pancreas surgeon um, at Hopkins, and so he's he's wrapped up in this too. So it's very exciting to have uh, a Karen. I actually sent them a patient uh, yesterday, wow. um, and so they, they've already received a referral from uh, so an FMMA member that needed their help. Yeah. We're getting ready to go, <clears throat> go live with them here probably in January, um, but we also have some other patients that even before we kind of do the, the big rollout, we've got a few that we're gonna send their way. Um, but again, you know, not based in Oklahoma, not based in Texas, um, and, and yet entering into the movement and embracing what we're all doing in this. And, you know, I think we had talked about, um, you know, this, the, the idea that, you know, the movement is kind of pigeonholed. It's an orthopedics thing, or it's an Oklahoma thing, or it's, it's this or that. I think you made the comment at a, at a, uh, uh one of the keynotes we did at an FMMA conference that <clears throat> at some point there won't be anything that you can't buy on a bundled, transparent, guaranteed basis because of the market when it starts to work. And, you know, those are just three examples there, uh, ER, uh, proton therapy, and then also these, these massive uh, complex uh, treatment cases that are being offered on a bundled cash basis. It and breaks I, the narrative because people are does. constantly saying, well, you can you can do these but small about, things, but what about what this? About, well, what about, yeah. And if I were going to pick three modalities of care that would come in last, it would be those three. Right. <laughs> and here they are. Yet there are some modalities of care that you know we still can't buy. I mean, here in Oklahoma City, I have a hard time buying corneal surgery. I mean, anybody needs a corneal transplant, and the Dean McGee Eye Institute, world famous, is here, and I can't get them to return my calls. So you would think that you could get a corneal transplant for for a cash price before you could get a bone marrow transplant for a cash price. It's it's mind blowing 
Uh, it's mind blowing how the market is breaking things down and, and the market will break everybody down eventually. Yeah. I think. So if there's anybody on this webinar that knows of a high quality, transparent minded corneal transplant facility, it doesn't matter where it is, <clears throat> share it. And that's really was the vision of the FMMA in the beginning and right. um, maybe a, a little market pressure uh, from a competitor somewhere else will uh, bring <laughs> our local Oklahoma friends to the table. Um, but that's, again, that's the market at work. It, it really is the antithesis of kind of the network uh, business model. It's the anti-network. It's, it's the uh, no coercion. Um, it literally is the free market at work and, and we're definitely seeing it happen. We had a new, um, we had a new robotic uh, urologist that has come on board and I'm sending him patients, but I love that first phone call where I talked to them and I said, now, how much do you want for your professional fee for robotic prostatectomy? And they, there's just, you almost think the line has gone blank and you're disconnected and say, what? And I said, how much do you want? I, I don't have any idea. And that's the most fun conversation because that for physicians is the beginning of learning you know, how this works and how the market works. You have to declare your value in the marketplace like every other industry. And, and I thoroughly enjoy watching the, just the smoke come out of the ears of doctors who are asked that question. Yeah, they've never been asked that. It's always been told to them. That's right. So James, you know us. We can go on for another three hours, but uh, well, I mean, this this sort of um, confirms some other things that we've talked about. And I know, Dr. Smith, you talked in a, on a webinar with a free, that free to care free to care um, online conference where they were, people were asking, well, should transparency be mandated by the government? And I think we're seeing that because of what people are actually doing in the marketplace, you don't really have to mandate transparency if people, it happens organically. Yeah, so. if you wanna, yeah, if you wanna stamp out transparency, the way to do it is to mandate it. I mean, the government doesn't get anything right. Uh, I predicted that if transparent, transparent pricing was mandated, that transparent pricing would just be redefined. And then Jay, accurately predicted what that definition would be, that transparency would therefore be redefined by the carriers as what is the patient's out of pocket. And that's precisely what happened uh, at the White House uh, when, when all of this transparency mandate started uh, to flow through the White House and isn't it a great idea to mandate this? That's precisely what happened. Uh, I further I will predict that if it is mandated, that they will sell exemptions uh, and the big box hospitals will buy their way out of having to post the prices. So there are certain things that just don't lend themselves yeah, to bundling, things like, yeah, like ER, bone marrow, like bone marrow, bone marrow right. and, and proton right, therapies. Right. Yeah. yeah, so um, it's happening. Uh, it's happening in spite of Uncle Sam and everything in the world that Washington, D.C. can conjure up to stop it. Uh, and that, that's why I, I really think it's astonishing uh, to watch this movement grow in spite of everything that's against it and, and to watch transparency just spread like uh, an ink stain all over the country. It's very exciting. Well, the problem also is that any government cannot predict the future. So any, any legislation that is passed is going to be addressed to something here and now. And, and entrepreneurs doing things always innovate and then five years from now something completely different That's right. is in the market like with uh, them trying to legislate um like um the the uh, health savings accounts with the dpcs i mean right. those are things they're now trying to address because there was a law that was passed before dpc even came about now they're trying to come up with something that is really yeah. Not working out the way DPCs would like for it. Well, hell, yeah, health savings account legislation and the legislation around uh, the qualified high deductible health plans are probably, and, and the few group knows this very well, Adam, you know, that two of the things that make it the most difficult to integrate DPC and or incentivize people to buy better, uh, especially if they have happen to have a, the employer happens to have a high deductible health plan, it is the health, the high deductible health plan regs. I mean, and Employers come to us all the time and say, "Well, you know, we've, we're, we're very cost we're very cost conscious, and we have a consumer driven plan. We have a qualified high deductible health plan, 
And we say, well, you've actually, in, you're impeding all that consumerism that you think you're embracing because you have a high deductible health plan. That could be fixed, but that's an example right there of the government had screwed up a good thing. And now really the solution is the government needs to just leave it, get it back out of it. At best, there's going to be unintended consequences, if the, even if they were the, had the best intentions. At worst, they're just a evil scam that they're going to bring in the cronies for to help direct it, which we yeah. know that's probably going to be the case. Um, if I think I'll go ahead. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? And what I can do is I can talk just for just a little bit about what we've been working on at the FMMA, what our sort of our focus areas are, what our plans are uh, going forward, and then you guys feel free to comment on any of that at the same time. Um, yeah, we're really excited. Uh, I think a lot of great things have happened since April uh, when, when we had our national conference. Okay, so our area of focus, um, it's hard to believe, but our annual conference is going to be uh, in April, so we're working on that. And some of the areas that we're really focusing on for our conference next year are uh, employer outreach and student participation. I think we all um, realize that in building the market, sure, you need the, both the, we have to build the supply and the demand, but it seems like the big push and the thing that is holding a lot of providers, uh, sellers back sometimes is the fear that there will not be a customer. So the more we can drive the demand side, I think the better and so we really hope to uh, have some employer focus, especially on the Friday of the conference, as we'll bring in some CEOs and uh, panels, uh, discussions of employers talking about their success. And students too, I think we had a lot of good feedback from the number of students that we had at the conference last year. And we really, really want to increase that. Um, marketing and outreach, we want uh, member value and benefits that we want to improve. And then, of course, we're always wanting to add new members and chapters, not just for the sake of adding new members uh, by any means, but we want this movement to grow. And I think having uh, very high quality, you know, solid members of the FMA is just an indicator that this movement is growing. So if you haven't seen already, uh, the conference is going to be in Dallas again next year. We're going to be just outside of Dallas at the uh, Dallas Plano area. It's a very nice area, relatively close to the airport, lots of shopping, lots of restaurants within walking distance of the hotel conference center. So we're really excited about that opportunity. It's, it's a great place to even like bring your family members that may want to hang out and do some shopping and fun things. Um, some primary objectives for the conference, as I mentioned, the, in addition to the employer outreach and student outreach, I think we haven't completely come up with a the um, theme this year, but I think we are kind of in agreement that we want to focus on entrepreneurship and the urgency of, of bringing the mindset of entrepreneurship back to uh, the free market medical movement. Uh, I mentioned the employer outreach and student outreach. And one thing we've heard from people that may not necessarily uh, be a member of the FMMA, but as we uh, started promoting a lot of the things that we've been doing more on social media, it seems like there is a growing number of people that would like to support our mo movement in some way. And I think we're going to give them the opportunity to do that by providing uh, scholarship opportunities to send medical students and residents to our conference. So look look out for that. We're going to create a crowdfunding campaign to raise money for student scholarships that I'm really excited about. We have a great vehicle to do that. And uh, I think that will be kind of something that people will be interested in, to, another way to support. Teaching those, our efforts. those medical students about how to, you know, Lever, how to be an entrepreneur in their industry yeah. is something that they never get taught in medical school. Right. Um, and so it, uh, if we can bring <clears throat> some of that education so they see that there is an alternative way that they can operate as a, as a physician, um, it, it just furthers the movement and it might actually unwind some of the, the mess that we're already in just through uh, matriculation, you know. Yeah. The industry. It's exciting. I think Marty McCary sort of helped drive that a little bit last year. He he 
approached uh, Dr. Smith and said that one of our goals should be to have at least half of our conference attendees uh, to be medical students, and we're really going to focus on moving in that direction. Uh, from a marketing and outreach, I, I've talked to a number of people and lots of people will say that you guys are doing great work and, and our movement is great. We have we don't have the marketing that uh, obviously these uh, big healthcare conglomerates and venture capital groups are coming. I mean, they're spending billions of dollars on marketing for, for something that's really not a service or product that's worth anything. So we have the product. We have to do the best we can to market and promote it uh, outside of that system. So guerrilla marketing efforts are very important. Uh, one thing we've done is recently is we've partnered with uh, an FMMA member that's very good at what they do. Uh, they're called Freedom Health Works and they have a podcast called Healthcare Americana that airs once a week and uh, two episodes a month feature FMMA members. And so we've had uh, several already. So please go check out their podcast. They're doing great work and it really is a way for us to highlight the successes from our membership. Um, social media, we've done, I think we've done a pretty good job with that uh, recently, this, this month. In the last 30 days, we've had over 35,000 viewers on our Facebook page, and we've added about 1,000 new uh, followers since April. Um, we're rebranding the, uh, the Free Market Health Solutions magazine to match our Shop Health uh, website tool. And so, the next issue of the magazine will be Shop Health Magazine. We feel like there's some opportunities there to really brand and, and market the Shop Health website more through that magazine. Uh, we've done one employer focused webinar and we're going to be doing more of those. Um, so I'm excited about that. That's just another outreach tool for us to sort of reach new markets to tell the, the success story of, of, of um, employers. Of course, Traditional media a lot of times is driven through the Surgery Center of Oklahoma because they hear about that. And, you know, CBS News did a, a pretty good um, little short feature on the Surgery Center of Oklahoma and how it relates to price transparency maybe last month. And out of that, we had three or four um, radio and podcast interviews that, that stemmed from that. So we'll still reach out to traditional media or hope that they reach out to us more as well. And I mentioned friends of the FMMA, FMMA and that's just more outreach to people that are just friend, friendly to what we're doing that may not be necessarily a, a buyer or a, a self-funded uh, employer or a, a um, physician group, but just you know, people on the street that want to help yeah. promote what we're doing. You know, on the traditional media side, um, I think that something that that the membership needs to to know is that you know if you are in your local community, and you know you know we found you know some of these film crews and, and news stations are kind of desperate for content sometimes. So oh, yeah. if, you, if they do knock on your door and said, "Hey, we'd love to film what's going on here. We've heard you, you're doing something alternative health delivery or whatever else," and and you do get a piece uh, made about what you all may be doing in your local community please share that with the FMMA office so we can then repost that in social media, link to it and really get it. it as you all know, you know, Dr. Smith and I, we're in this to spread this movement. We both have day jobs. This we're not in the business of running an association. That's, that's what James is doing. And so spreading this movement and getting it where it is seen is not an Oklahoma thing, not a surgery center of Oklahoma and a Kempton thing, but giving that ownership to every, I mean, that's the whole concept behind local chapters is so a local chapter can have almost a branch of the free market medical association in Des Moines. Uh, and so if, if there is anything that's happened that's newsworthy that you're seeing uh, that's occurring in your community, please let us put that into the echo chamber and see if we can get it out there more. No doubt. Yeah, we'll talk about local chapters a little bit more. Um, just want to run through a few of these quickly as we're trying to do things all constantly add value as an association for our members. And uh, one of those things, of course, is shop health. We're making some enhancements to that. We're 
we're going to have a, a link on the on the front page of Shop Health and on the FMMA site that will link to a map of the U.S. with all of our members on it. And of course, when people click on the uh, member, if you have your pricing on Shop Health, it will take them to that pricing. So again, we want to reiterate as much as possible. If you don't have your pricing on Shop Health, please you know consider adding that because it really makes a huge difference. We recently added. Um, the Oklahoma Heart Hospital, um, we, you have to contact them directly for the price, but we have all of their procedures on Shop Health now. And so now we have more than 2,000 services and procedures on Shop Health, and that's growing all the time. So we're excited about that. Uh, the podcast opportunities, as I mentioned, if you have any success stories in your area, like uh, Jay was talking about, we can we can talk about those and highlight those on this podcast. So that's really one of the goals of the podcast really is to share um, not only what's broken with the healthcare system, but how obviously how it's working in the FMMA with our members. Uh, member webinars like this, we're going to be doing more of these. Uh, we're going to be putting together next year probably a monthly phone call with chapter leaders so they can network and sort of share ideas and how they, they can help each other improve things. Uh, social media promotion, I mentioned Shop Health Magazine. Uh, oh, the other thing was Shop Health, one of the enhancements to Shop Health in, in the next uh, week or so, we're going to be adding advertising opportunities on Shop Health. So as, more, as we drive more consumers and employers to the Shop Health page, our members will be able to, if if they want, they can create an ad for their um, business on the Shop Health site to sort of you know, focus the consumer attention to them. Um, uh, we're very excited about some new our, our new our membership is growing. We usually have seven or eight new members a month that are you know being added as FMA, FMMA members. Um, and we've added six new chapters since April. And so we're, we're constantly getting um, inquiries about how people can start chapters. So we're obviously going to be working on ways to help facilitate and those chapters to grow much better. Uh, we just had the opening uh, first meeting of the San Antonio chapter last night, and that was very well attended. I think we had 50 or 60 people, and it was great. We had people from all areas from we had two or three employers there we had pharmacists we had brokers um, several DPCs and um, so it was just a great great event and I just wanted to say thanks to those guys in San Antonio that have have started that we also have a chapter in Arizona Colorado uh, Montana Amarillo Texas and San Francisco that have just wow. formed recently so I guess that's really, those are kind of the highlights of what I wanted. Um, I don't see any necessarily any questions right now in the chat area, but if there's anything, if you do have questions, feel free to send those to um, the support at fmma.org and we can use them to maybe the next webinar that we do, we can, we can answer some of those questions for you. But if you guys have any sort of final thoughts and I think comments, I think so. Again, you know, this is your association, so you know anything that uh, that you think uh, would would be beneficial as far as getting the word out, expanding. We do, um, you know, we. I think you know a couple of years ago we didn't have James on board, and so you know he does travel out. He does have a travel budget to be able to go out and attend local chapter meetings and uh, and, and and spend some time uh, directly in your area. So um, just lean on. Uh, Lean on James, and um, we'll uh, hopefully we'll uh, be able to grow the movement um, through that kind of outreach. So, thanks. Thank we thank and yeah. thanks again thank to the FIA group, Adam Russo, for helping coordinate this, and uh, all you guys do. Thanks for your support as members, and keep up the great work. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. -bye.